The South Will Way began in response to some student feedback. Students said that they would feel more comfortable in school and would learn a lot more if all the teachers adopted a consistent style of teaching. So why is it important to think about how we learn? Well, psychologists call learning to learn metacognition. And they're really interested in this because research has shown that if we understand how we learn, we can make an additional seven months of progress for every year. And that is an amazing amount of extra progress. So it's really useful to think about how we learn. Let's think about what we mean by learning. So learning takes place when knowledge moves into long term memory. So put simply, if you can't remember something, you don't know it. So it's really important that we, we think about how that transfer takes place. We have working memory and we have long term memory. So working memory is where we deal with the problems we're faced with in the moment and it's some it's easily overwhelmed you've probably had that feeling of having too much to think about and it sometimes gives you a headache long-term memory is where we store our knowledge and it's a lot easier to think if you can easily recall information from your long-term memory the human brain is an amazing thing it actually has a limitless capacity for knowledge and it stores the information by linking it together in what psychologists call schema. So if you've got a lot of knowledge in long term memory, it makes it a lot easier for your working memory to think. When we were designing the South Wirral Way, we based all our thinking on an understanding of how we learn. So we did a lot of reading about what's called cognitive psychology. And the South Wirral Way is clearly relevant to every single subject in school and every single key, key stage from year seven through to year 13 and then beyond into work and into university and apprenticeship. Now the South Real Way as a whole should be the structure of the typical lesson in our school. Occasionally teachers might do something different but they'd always have reasons for, for varying that, that plan. The South Real Way is the typical lesson in our school. So this is the South Real Way. There are five parts. We start every lesson with routine practice retrieval before we start to explain some new knowledge. And then we take our first steps in learning by looking at some worked examples. We model what a good one looks like, and we might start working um, on, on some supported examples. Before we move into the learning pit for the you do part of the lesson, they're independent and challenging tasks. And we usually finish with a review of what we've learned, and we focus on the key vocabulary from your knowledge organizers. All through the lesson, the teachers will be assessing what progress is being made. So let's talk about what assessment means. The purpose of assessment is to identify knowledge that's still fragile and secure it into long term memory. Now, teachers do this all the time. They're doing it in your routine practice recall. They're doing it when they explain uh, in the we do section of the lesson and, uh, and, they, and they do it when they're giving feedback during the you do section of the, of the lesson, and they do it when they're marking your work and, and, and giving you um, targets and actions. In every case, what teachers do is they act on this assessment by clarifying things to make sure that the explanation is clear, or perhaps by re-explaining something that's not been grasped yet. And sometimes if they can't do that in the moment, they'll make a little note and replan future teaching to address things that are still fragile and not in long term memory. This is what assessment means. Routine practice retrieval usually takes place at the start of the lessons and the, the, the tasks that we do are usually based on the knowledge from knowledge organisers because knowledge organisers contain the essential things, the most important knowledge that you need to know. And it's usually a quiz or some questioning or using mini whiteboards. But it's always really important to understand here that we're not trying to find fault or, or test you here. This is supposed to be helpful because it's supposed to help you to remember things in the long term, find out if there are gaps in your knowledge so that we can help and to help the teachers to plan the next steps. 
Why is retrieval practice really helpful? Um, they're really helpful because they help me to remember things I learned a long time ago and I might have forgotten them um, if it wasn't for the, the, the retrieval practices but they help me remember things so it, doesn't, it isn't forgotten. Why is retrieval practice helpful? I think retrieval practice is helpful because not only is it good to jog your memory every time but it's also helpful to A, go back on what you've learned and B, just be able to see what you've learned over the years because it, it could go back to previous things and something I do like about the French Super 6 is that it goes last lesson, a few lessons ago and a long time ago which, which makes you remember a lot more things than you usually do and I've seen the retrieval um, practice get integrated into every lesson and now it's almost in every one and I, I really like it and sometimes it's just really nice just to have a kickstart in your head. Brilliant, thanks for that, Jake. Uh, start with Lily. So, Lily, why is retrieval practice helpful? Um, so you can like go back through what you did in the other lessons, and if you've like forgotten something, you can be like reminded of what you've done in the past lessons. Oh, brilliant, good to know. The I do part of the lesson is where we explain new knowledge. And this is where there's a lot of new knowledge to explain, but we try to make it as understandable as possible by presenting it in small steps. And we want to make sure our instructions and explanations are clear. And we'll use as many examples as we can to illustrate the points to you. So Paige, why is it good for new knowledge to be presented in small steps? It's good to be presented in small steps. So if you don't understand a certain thing, you know what part you don't understand, so you can learn more about that. In the we do part of the lesson, you start practicing using the knowledge with the support of teachers. When teachers are explaining things, they might often think aloud and show you the steps that they took in their thinking. They'll show you examples of what a good one looks like, examples of excellence. And they'll give you lots of worked examples and they might ask a lot of questions. And some of those questions might be straightforward, factual questions, but some of them might be more challenging. And from now on, we're going to call those challenging questions hot questions. And you might see that graphic in a document or on the screen. When you see it, it's telling you that that is a really significant, important question from your knowledge organiser. It's probably quite challenging. Uh, so why is it always good to see what a good one looks like? I personally believe it's good to see what a good one looks like because it allows us to implement um, features from what the teachers have shown us or what other examples have shown us into our own work um, and we can further develop our subject knowledge from that. Right, thank you. Why is it good to see what a good one looks like? It's good to see what a good one looks like because you learn what your expectations are. The next part of the lesson is, is the you do part of the lesson. It, it's where we work independently on challenging tasks. It's where we ask you to explain what you've learned, work independently, challenging, deep thinking tasks. We sometimes call this working in the challenge pit. I'll explain a little bit more about this part of the lesson. Learning happens when we have to think. If, if a task is too easy, we're in our comfort zone, we're not thinking hard enough, and, and really, there's nothing new being learned there. But if it's too hard, we tend to react emotionally, and sometimes we might enter a panic zone. So when we're setting our tasks for you to do, we want to make sure that you're challenged just enough, but not too much, and we, we'll call that the stretch zone. So the tasks are designed to be challenging, appropriately challenging, not too hard, not too easy. You might have seen this graphic in classrooms and around school. It describes what the learning pit is. When we try something new, we sometimes feel a little bit anxious or nervous about it. And, and so we need to have a go. Being prepared to get it wrong, and there's absolutely no shame at all in getting something wrong. If you're getting something wrong, listen to the feedback and you're probably going to make a lot more progress as a result. After the students have spoken, I'm going to give you some tips on how to get out of the learning pit yourself. Also, why is it good for you to be challenged? Um, it helps me to expand my knowledge and expand my abilities because um, I don't want to be doing things that are too easy for me because then my knowledge will stay the same and it won't be expanded. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, 
And finally, why do you think it's good to be challenged? Um, so like if you've like done stuff that's easy for you then you could like ask for more challenging work to see like if you are capable of challenging stuff in the lessons. Great, thank you. Here's a suggestion of how to get out of the learning pit. Brain, book, buddy, boss. So when, when you've got a problem that seems on the surface to be really hard, stop and think and just have a think to yourself, what knowledge do I need to have to solve this problem? And if you, if you can't find that knowledge to hand, well, maybe you can look it up. Sometimes there's a book in front of you or a worksheet, or sometimes you're working on a computer and you can look up a, an internet resource like YouTube. You can also ask a friend, can you solve the problem by working together with somebody else? And if all of these things don't work, well then ask the teacher, ask the boss, uh, and ask that teacher, you know, how, how would I solve this problem? They won't give you the answer, they'll give you some tips to get you thinking and moving forward. The last part of the, the lesson is often a review, which includes key vocabulary. So every knowledge organiser contains these key words and it's important that we use them in our written work and learn how to spell them as well. At this point in lesson, the, the teacher will often be assessing your progress, but really they've been assessing your progress all the way through the lesson all the time trying to work out if there's any knowledge that's still fragile so they can clarify or re-explain for you. Let's have a look at what each knowledge organiser consists of because it's always structured in the same way. There's always a box that asks you what do I need to know before starting which is useful because it's a useful way of checking do you, are there, is there any old topics that you need to revisit because you did not fully grasp them. Then there's always a box that lists all the knowledge in this new topic. That is really, really important. So the knowledge organiser does not consist of every single piece of information on this topic, not at all, but it does show you the most important. And lastly, there's a keyword section where we've, we've put a list of all the really important vocabulary that you need to know with an explanation, a definition of what the word means. So uh, why is it important for us to learn key vocabulary? Well, for me in particular, doing humanities and English subjects, it just really helps with improving on, well, obviously the terminology, and that will in turn help with uh, setting out essays and uh, other sort of things, things like source questions and whatnot. Great, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and also as a sick format, why are knowledge organisers useful? Um, knowledge organisers allow us to say if we've forgotten part of the subject or we've forgotten key terminology we can reach back and um, during our own independent time we can look at that knowledge and um, further develop it. Great, thank you very much. Why are knowledge organisers quite useful? I think knowledge organisers are really useful because not only does it have the key words and also information but it's also there as a tool where you can go back and revise and also um, use for the retrieval. So if you don't know something, instead of having to either flick through your book to a certain lesson or put your hand up and ask a teacher, you can just go to the big A4 piece of paper um, and immediately get the information, which is something that m some other schools don't have. And I think this is what makes the school stand out. Right. In the sixth form, there's another element of the South Wirral Way that we call independent study logs. An independent study log is a, is a plan for all your independent learning. And it's designed to prepare our students for what life is like at universities or on apprenticeships or in the world of work when you have to be able to work independently. Most independent study logs have got three sections, which you can see on the screen. The top section is what you would call your homework, your home learning, and there's also an indication of how much time you should spend on it. There's also a section here that describes ongoing independent study, things that are not in one particular lesson but ongoing in the background. And then at the bottom we've got stretch and challenge tasks, so if you are really going for the very top grades in this subject and you want to deepen your knowledge, a little bit more, perhaps find out more about further study at university or college, and you can you can see that here. Independent study logs con contain two weeks worth of independent learning. Hello, Sikpomas. Uh, so, why are your independent study logs useful? 
um, they help you to develop your knowledge in lessons and get the extra understanding. Right, right. Give you the next steps for um, so your study in university. Duncan, why are independent study logs good? Uh, they they sort of just organise our own independent like sort of study time in a general good direction for whatever we're doing at the time, uh, what subjects we're currently studying, other things. So it's good for every fortnight to have a good goal to be going towards. To finish, I also asked our students how we can improve our teaching even further. Um, one thing I'd like teachers to improve is to give better examples um, because they are much ha like help more helpful. They help me to like know what to do um, and to like expand my knowledge. So, Luke, is there anything you'd like us to do better in school? Um, I wish um, all teachers would further go into depth with their answers and maybe explain it a little further um, and help us to understand what they're going. Uh, what they're discussing in the topic. So, how can we make this an even better school? Um, probably by teachers helping the students that actually need help instead of like going over to check someone's work and going over to the person that needs help with theirs. So, how can we make our school even better? To put more like explanation into the we do because it makes it easier to understand what we will be doing in the you do. So there we have it. You've, you've heard today about what we do in the South World and you, more importantly you've heard why we do it. And you've heard from students about what they value the most.